It was twilight in Sleepy Forest, and the animals were settling down for the night. Moonbeams cascaded through the branches of the trees and danced slowly across the forest floor. The sky was a beautiful shade of purple and pink, and the clouds were as fluffy as marshmallows. All around the forest, animals prepared their children for bedtime. Warm baths were run, soothing drinks of cocoa were made, and bedtime stories were told. On the far side of Sleepy Forest, there was a cosy house made of bamboo, and inside the house lived a family of pandas. The youngest panda was called Bao, and he loved everything about bedtime, especially the stories his parents and grandparents told him. His favourite stories were about dragons, and every night he would ask for a story about the marvellous dragons and their amazing adventures. That evening, as Bao settled down in his bed, he didn't ask for a story about dragons, because there was something else on his mind. There was a question that had been concerning him all day, and he couldn't stop thinking about it. When his grandma asked what bedtime story he would like, Bao asked, Grandma, have you ever seen a dragon? No, Bao, I haven't, she replied. Would you like a story about the water dragon tonight, or maybe the weather dragon? Bao said, Grandma, has anyone in our family ever seen a dragon? Grandma shook her head. Then, how do you know they exist? Bao asked. Grandma smiled kindly. Because I can feel it in my heart. And when I go into the forest, I can sense the dragons in nature, in the ocean, and in the stars. But no one has ever seen them, Bao persisted. Grandma shook her head again. Hmm, came Bao's reply. He closed his eyes and looked like he was ready for sleep. Grandma started to tell him a story about the water dragon. Bao's eyes opened. Grandma, has anyone in our village seen a dragon? Or anyone in Sleepy Forest? Grandma said she wasn't sure and maybe she could ask around tomorrow. She continued with her story, but the little panda didn't close his eyes again. Grandma could tell by the look on his little face that he was still thinking about dragons and whether anyone had seen one. The little panda sat up in bed, placed his paws on the covers and said, I've never seen a dragon. Maybe they aren't real. Maybe they only exist in stories. Grandma wasn't sure what to say, and she realised she needed help with Bao's dragon question. She stood up and held her paw out to Bao. Come with me. Let's see if we can find someone special to answer your question. Grandma took Bao out of the house and into the garden. She asked him to find three acorn tops. Bao wasn't sure why she needed them, but did as he was asked. Between them, they soon found three acorn tops. Grandma placed them beneath a tree and told Bao that magical help was always available to those who needed it. And one way to ask for their help was by placing three acorn tops outside their home. 
Bao looked at his grandma in amazement and whispered, Magical help? What kind of magical help? You'll soon see, Grandma said wisely. A few seconds later, the magical help they were waiting for arrived in the shape of a fairy who was wearing a dress the colour of the midnight sky. Her silver wings fluttered gently in the evening breeze and a velvet pouch hung from a silver belt around her waist. The fairy smiled at the pandas and said softly, Hello, my name is Midnight and I help with all matters concerning the night. Did you call for me? We did. Thank you for coming here, Grandma said. She introduced herself and Bao, and said her grandson was having trouble falling asleep because of his question about dragons and whether they were real. Midnight smiled kindly at Bao and said they were real because she had seen them many times. Bao was too surprised to speak for a moment. Then he found his voice and asked the fairy many questions. Where had she seen the dragons? What did they look like? Do they like eating cake or strawberry jam sandwiches or bamboo? Where do they go on holiday? Midnight said, I don't know the answers to those questions. But if it's okay with your grandma, I can take you on a journey and you can meet some dragons for yourself. Bao looked at his grandma with big eyes and asked if he could go with the fairy. His grandma said, of course, but told him not to stay out too long because it was already bedtime. The fairy said she wouldn't keep him out long because it was nearly her bedtime too. She put her hand over her mouth and covered up a yawn. Bao tried his best not to yawn, but he couldn't stop a little one from coming out. He didn't think anyone noticed. Midnight reached into her pouch and pulled out a handful of multicoloured glitter. She cast it into the air where it twinkled brightly for a second and then fluttered to the ground. Out of the glitter arose a sparkling blue pond. A red wooden bridge crossed the pond, adorned with lanterns in shades of pink and purple. Midnight looked at Bao and said, Our journey begins. Let's cross the bridge together. Bao said goodbye to his grandma and followed the fairy across the red bridge. On the other side of it was a winding path that was lined with bamboo. Bao walked along the path and felt the warm wind ruffling his fur. The twilight breeze travelled through the bamboo causing them to gently bump into each other. They created a soothing, chiming sound that created an air of tranquility. Bao walked along feeling calm and relaxed. The path came to an end at an open field. In the middle of the field, there was a red dragon. Bao stopped in his tracks and his little mouth 
fell open in surprise. He stared at the dragon, completely lost for words. The dragon was magnificent. She was covered in bright scales which were the colour of red poppies and her eyes shone brightly like precious rubies. Her long tail swished back and forth across the grass and a gentle smile alighted on her kind face. She waved at the fairy and the panda. Bao had heard stories about a red dragon and thought she might be the adventure dragon. He was too shy to say anything and could only wave his little paw at her. The red dragon moved gracefully towards the fairy and the panda. She said, Hello there, Midnight. It's a pleasure to see you again. May I ask who your friend is, please? Midnight introduced Bao. As soon as his name was said, Bao's words tumbled from his mouth like a gushing waterfall. Hello, I've never met a dragon before, but I've heard lots of stories about them. Are you the adventure dragon? I've heard about you. Is it true you found some gold coins hidden in a faraway valley? And did you discover a crystal forest deep in the heart of a jungle? The red dragon chuckled and said yes, she was the adventure dragon and those stories were true. She moved closer to the little panda and looked at him with eyes full of kindness. It made Bao feel all warm and happy inside. The dragon said, I'm just about to go on another adventure. There's a mountain I want to explore because I've heard there's a secret cave hidden within it. Would you too like to come with me? The mountain isn't far away. Bao nodded eagerly. He couldn't take his eyes off the amazing dragon. Midnight asked if they would be flying to the mountain. When the adventure dragon nodded in reply, Midnight told Bao he would need some wings. She reached into the pouch around her waist and took out some glitter. With Bao's permission, she sprinkled some onto his back. The panda giggled and said it tickled. He looked over his shoulder and was amazed to see a pair of red wings on his back. Without any effort at all, he flapped his new wings. Wow, Bao said as he gazed at his wings. He flapped them again and floated off the ground. Midnight put her hand on his shoulder and said, Don't fly away just yet. Stay close to me. Give your wings a few more flaps to get used to them. Bao did so. He couldn't stop smiling. Having wings was amazing. A minute later, the adventure dragon, the fairy and the panda rose from the ground and flew towards the mountain. As they headed towards the top of it, the dragon asked them to look out for a small opening. They flew twice around the mountain top, looking for the hidden entrance. It was Bao who spotted it. He pointed to a gap between two rocks and asked if it was the entrance. The dragon said it was, but it looked too small for her to fly through. 
Midnight took some glitter from her pouch and threw it towards the gap. The opening grew bigger and bigger. Soon, it was big enough for everyone to fly through. The red dragon went through first and was followed by the fairy and the panda. They entered a large cave. Sparkling gems twinkled from the roof of the cave, and the floor was covered in glimmering golden sand. Bao noticed something peculiar at the far side of the cave. He landed gently on the floor of the cave and walked towards it. When he got closer, he saw there was an opening in the floor and inside it there was a shiny slide that led to another cave below them. He called out to the dragon and the fairy and showed them what he'd found. We should go down it the red dragon said. It's too small for me and I wonder if you could use your magic again, Midnight. Midnight said of course and asked Bao to use the glitter this time. She held out the open pouch to the panda. Bao reached into the bag. He wasn't sure how much to take so He only took a small amount. He sprinkled it into the air like he'd seen Midnight doing. The sprinkles landed on the opening in the cave floor and made it big enough for everyone. With a whoop of joy, the trio travelled down the silver slide and came to a soft landing at the bottom of it. The cave was much bigger than the one above and a pale purple stream ran slowly through the middle of it. The red dragon looked closer at the stream and shook her head in disbelief. She told the others it could be the legendary singing stream. She had heard about it from her mother but had never come across it on her adventures. She frowned and said, If this is the singing stream, I wonder how we can make it sing. Bao had an idea. He said, Shall I try singing a song and see if the stream joins in with me? The others thought that was an excellent idea. Bao thought about his very favourite song. It was one his mum sang on an evening when he was settling down in bed. He started to sing it. Within seconds, the stream joined in with the lovely lullaby tune. The peaceful sound echoed around the cave. The red dragon yawned and said the song was so soothing that it was making her feel sleepy. Bao reached the end of his song. The stream stopped singing too. At that moment, a pale purple boat appeared on the water and bobbed on the surface of the stream. Midnight said, I think we're supposed to get into this boat and let it carry us downstream. She asked the red dragon if she wanted to come with them. The dragon yawned and said she needed a nap. Having adventures always made her sleepy. She asked them to come back and see her again soon. The adventure dragon curled up on the ground, closed her eyes and fell asleep. Bao and Midnight 
climbed into the pale purple boat and were carried gently onwards. Bao waved goodbye to the sleeping dragon. The little panda's wings folded up neatly on his back. The boat took the panda and the fairy through the cave and out into the sunshine. It bobbed along and came to a rest in the middle of a lake. On the grass at the side of the lake was another dragon. This one was blue and had shimmering scales the colour of the sky on a summer's day. His blue eyes twinkled merrily at Bao and Midnight. Bao whispered, Is that the water dragon? The one who goes on underwater adventures and discovers new worlds? Midnight nodded. She had met the water dragon before and told Bao he was very friendly and loved having visitors. She waved to the blue dragon. The beautiful dragon got into the lake. He swam over to them and said hello. Bao gave him a shy hello in return and said his grandfather had told him many stories about the dragon's underwater adventures. The water dragon chuckled and said that was good to know. He told them he was about to go on another underwater adventure and would they like to go with him? The panda and the fairy quickly said yes. Because they would be travelling underwater, Midnight used her magic glitter to turn the boat into a submarine made of glass. The water dragon told them to follow him. He smoothly dipped below the surface of the water. Midnight showed Bao how to steer the submarine. It wasn't at all difficult, and Bao easily lowered the vessel beneath the water. Through the glass, they saw the blue dragon waiting for them ahead. He waved at them and began to swim through the water. Bao steered the submarine and followed the dragon. Through the crystal clear water they went. Soon they came to a large rock. The dragon touched it and the rock turned into a bridge. The water dragon swam under it. Bao expertly steered the submarine beneath the bridge and when they came out of the other side, he discovered they were no longer in the lake. They were in the ocean. Schools of brightly coloured fish swam past the submarine and gave it curious looks. Seahorses bobbed by and waved at the panda and fairy. They waved back. The blue dragon continued swimming along and the submarine followed him. Before long, the water dragon stopped swimming and swirled around in the water. He said he'd heard a story about a hidden world somewhere nearby, and he couldn't see a way into that world. He asked Midnight and Bao to help him look for a way in. Bao slowly steered the submarine over patches of swaying grass and pink coral reefs. He soon spotted a large boulder covered in fossils. One of the fossils was gold in colour and was larger than the others. 
It reminded Bao of a door handle. Could it be the entrance to another world? He waved to the water dragon and pointed to the gold fossil. The dragon moved towards the fossil. He reached out and put his hand on it. He twisted it, and a door in the boulder opened. The water dragon grinned at Bao and gave him a nod. The opening was big enough for them to pass through. The blue dragon went first, and the others followed. They entered another new world. It looked very much like the ocean they had just been in, but the animals who were swimming about weren't like any Bao had seen before. He looked at Midnight and saw she was just as astonished as he was. The blue dragon looked surprised too. Bao thought he could guess what the animals were but he asked Midnight anyway. Midnight answered, They are sea unicorns. I've only ever heard stories about them before. I've never met any, and I thought they weren't real and only existed in stories. Bao smiled and said that's what he had thought about dragons, but not any more. The sea unicorns were a variety of delicate colours. Blue, green, pink and purple. Their long manes flowed gently in the current of the water and their silver horns twinkled and shimmered like stars in the sky. The sea unicorns welcomed their visitors and asked them to stay for a while. The water dragon, the fairy, and the panda spent a little time with the sea unicorns and were shown around their world. Bao noticed how the sea unicorns kept changing colour from one pastel shade to another. It was relaxing to watch and he felt himself becoming more and more peaceful as he gazed upon the changing colours. Bao yawned. Midnight did too. And so did the water dragon. The travellers decided it was time to say goodbye to the sea unicorns, but promised to return another time. With the water dragon leading the way, Bao and Midnight returned to the lake where they had first met the blue dragon. The dragon said he was very tired and needed to sleep. He thanked them for going on an adventure with him and asked them to come back again soon. With a big Big yawn, the water dragon curled up on the grass beside the lake, closed his eyes and fell asleep. Midnight and Bao climbed out of the submarine. The fairy looked upwards and told Bao there was one more dragon for him to meet. Bao tilted his head and saw a big cloud floating towards them. A green dragon with skin the colour of spring leaves was sitting in the middle of it. Bao recognised the dragon immediately. It was the weather dragon and according to the stories he had heard, the dragon had amazing magical powers over the weather. The weather dragon landed her cloud next to Midnight and Bao. She said, 
Hello, Midnight. It's good to see you again. She smiled kindly at Bao. You must be Bao. I've heard about you. And how you've helped some friends of mine on their adventures today. I know you live in Sleepy Forest and that it's night time there. Would you like to fly home or would you prefer a lift on my cloud? Bao did like flying, but as he was feeling very tired, he asked if he could have a lift back, please. Midnight was also tired and asked the same question. The weather dragon said, of course, and asked them to climb on. She said, Bow, if you're not too tired, you could help me with some of the weather on the way back to Sleepy Forest. Midnight and Bow climbed onto the fluffy cloud and sat next to the dragon. Bow put his paws on the cloud. It was as soft as his bed. Thinking about his bed made him yawn. Midnight told Bao his wings would slowly disappear on the way home. But if he ever needed them back, he need only call out for her magical help. The cloud rose to the sky and moved forwards over the mountains. The weather dragon said she had to deliver snow to some of the mountains, and asked Bao to take a paw full of cloud. The panda did so. It felt cool and refreshing. The green dragon stopped above a mountain, and told Bao to rub the tuft of cloud together in his paws. Bao gently rubbed the cloud back and forth. Tiny snowflakes floated from the piece of cool cloud and drifted over the mountain. They grew bigger and bigger, and then fell on the mountain top and covered it in a blanket of snow. When enough snow had fallen, the weather dragon moved the cloud away from the mountain and over some fields. She asked Bao to take another bit of cloud. He did so, and when he rubbed it together, he made raindrops appear. The rain fell gently to the fields below, and Bao heard the soft pitter-patter as it landed on the ground. It was a soothing sound and made him feel sleepy. He yawned. The weather dragon noticed how tired the panda was and swiftly headed to Sleepy Forest arriving a minute later. The animals of Sleepy Forest were fast asleep, tucked up inside their cosy homes. Moonbeams cascaded through the branches of the trees and danced slowly across the forest floor. The tired panda yawned again and lay down on the soft cloud. It was warm and snuggly. A few moments later, the green dragon brought the cloud to a soft landing outside Bao's bamboo house. His grandma was waiting for him. She was surprised to see the dragon and waved shyly. 
grandma stepped onto the cloud and took Bao into her arms. She gave the green dragon a silent thank you. She would have said thank you to midnight too, but the little fairy was fast asleep. Bao's grandma stepped off the cloud with her sleeping grandson in her arms. The weather dragon said it had been a pleasure to meet them both and that she would take midnight home. She said goodbye and flew away on the fluffy cloud. Bao's grandma smiled softly at her grandson. She knew he would have lots of stories to tell her about dragons. But those stories could wait for another day. She took him inside and put him into his bed. She kissed him goodnight and left the room. That night, Bao dreamt about the amazing dragons he had met, the adventures they'd been on together, and the adventures they would have in the future. <laughs>